Chesterfield County is just south of Richmond, Virginia in the central Atlantic region of the United States and we're populated by 365,000 residents. We have a lot of really diverse policing needs. We have urban, we have suburban, and we have rural. So policing in Chesterfield County really is an adventure and it spans the spectrum of what you can expect in modern law enforcement. So the Chesterfield County Police Department exists for four primary reasons. The preservation of human life, the protection of the vulnerable, the establishment of problem-solving partnerships, and personnel. It's our ability to attract, retain, develop top-tier talent. Everything that we do as an organization really revolves around the quality of our staff. So the culture that Chief Katz is creating, I would say, is one of uh, leadership um, and ownership and innovation. He puts a premium on leadership and leadership coming from anywhere within the organization. And there's nothing more powerful when members of the department across the board all feel that they have the ability to make a positive contribution for the betterment of the entire department and the community. Our people know that they're leaders in our community, regardless of whatever rank they may hold. Just over the last couple of years, we've actually hired 46 certified law enforcement officers from the East Coast of the United States from over 25 different agencies. People know what we're about. They want to be part of it. You know, the reputation that Chesterfield leadership had was just stellar. From the moment I showed up, I realized that this was different. Uh, I met the lead training officer. He met me in the lobby when I got there. We shook hands and were introduced to each other on a first name basis. And uh, immediately I, I saw that respect, you know, that, that it wasn't the type of thing where I was going to be treated like a recruit, but rather as an officer from the very beginning. You know, I've been able to work plainclothes assignments to, to go out to really work surveillance and interdiction uh, as I've found that necessary. And every time that I've asked for something, that need has been met. We're being open-minded here at the Training Academy to different training ideas. We have an in-service every year. In-services are really scripted, so what we decided to do is to try to do something unscripted. We take calls for service that officers have encountered um, that have been handled and we reproduce those calls here at the Training Academy in a safe environment so that everyone can learn from it. So we're pulling a lot of good talent from other, other agencies um, around us that want to come here and work here. One of the differentiating programs we have in Chesterfield is what I call our School to Squad Pipeline, and that's our ability and willingness to cultivate relationships with the youth in our community. We provide them with guidance and mentorship. We do through, through our Police Athletic League program, through our cadet program, and ultimately through our police service aides. So the police service aid program is for 18 and older to kind of get their toes wet in the police department, whether they're interested in being an officer or forensics or maybe even property. Um, it gives them a chance to handle non-emergency calls um, such as simple reports or larcenies. You get to go through some basic defense training. You go through an academy um, learning basic laws, what you can and cannot do as a civilian position, but it's super rewarding because you're building those relationships with community members, you're building relationships with the officers. So for me, when I transitioned from PSA to the academy, they were able to provide encouragement and advice as I went through the officer academy, and now I'm working alongside of them as an officer now, and that's extremely rewarding and really just a really cool thing to be a part of. One thing that I'm really passionate about is protecting the youth in our community. Not only do we want to try to cultivate them as future workforce, but we recognize them as a vulnerable population. And so that's one of the reasons we've ramped up our special victims unit to the extent we have, where we do uh, a lot of operations where we target people who would come to our community and victimize our children. Unfortunately, there's no shortage of, of individuals from within the community and outside of the community that are willing to utilize technology and social media to try to solicit minors. So our unit actually does a lot of public education. We have some of our detectives that specialize in that area giving tips to parents and, and guardians and schools as to how to identify some of these things, how to keep children safe, because if we can arm parents, if we can arm the caretakers of these minors with the appropriate knowledge, then we can complement our enforcement actions 
I've only seen the number of these cases increase, so it's going to be that much more important that there is adequate and dedicated personnel here um, that are ready to uh, assist these victims. A workforce that is healthy will retire and extend beyond their years. What we provide here are services that get officers to that point, whether it be physically, mentally, emotionally, financial, spiritual, all of those things are being offered here. We have a wellness coordinator, and that coordinator works to develop programs and to provide counsel and guidance and resources to all of our work staff, sworn and non-sworn. So anything wellness related, it's a one-stop shop you reach out to our wellness coordinator and we'll give you what you need. Coming from the military, uh, myself and a lot of guys have suffered from uh, post-traumatic stress and we've been through a lot and this agency understands that that type of thing continues here and they, uh, they really promote mental well-being. I think they realize that the better officer you are, the better that serves the community. It's an amazing career. Um, it's time consuming and it's hard at times, but I wouldn't change it because I get to change lives and make a difference. So we want people to feel safe and that they can come to us and know that we genuinely care because it's our community too. An agency that honors people over process. Everything we do is an interpersonal interaction. And so it's really important that our operations uh, and the spirit in which we go about our business honors people. It's a model that I think other agencies could help benefit from. And it's one that I, we're gonna continue to uh, innovate through uh, in the years to come.